Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the TCP view tool uh, that comes with SysInternals. So this is a tool you could use to kind of monitor your network traffic. It's not a real uh, full-fledged network monitoring app, but it can come in handy for troubleshooting uh, certain things that are coming in and out of your computer. All right, so TCP view it provides real-time visibility into all TCP and UDP connections. So TCP connections are used when the traffic must come through, and if something gets scrambled or fails, it will resend it. And then we have UDP on the other hand, which just kind of sends it. And if it makes it, it makes it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So this will actually let you check both of these if you want. All right, so as I was saying, real-time visibility into all TCP and UDP connections in a Windows system, showing which processes are communicating over the network, their endpoints, and their current connection states. All right, so who is it for and what does it do? All right, so obviously this is going to be for you. So IT technicians and system administrators for diagnosing network performance issues and connection problems, network and security professionals to detect suspicious or unauthorized connections and monitor active traffic, power users and troubleshooters to understand which applications are using network resources. All right, so what does it do? It displays active TCP and UDP connections and their associated processes, shows local and remote IP addresses and ports in real time, and tracks connection states, and also allows termination of connections directly from the interface, which we'll see in a minute here. All right, so the key features and usage of TCP view. All right, so live connection monitoring. As you'll see, it continuously refreshes to show current network activity. Process Association identifies which application or service owns each connection, uh, can resolve addresses, so this is used to show host names instead of raw IP addresses, kill and close connections, you could right click to end unwanted or suspicious sessions, export and logging, so you could capture output for analysis or documentation. All right, so you can do some troubleshooting with TCP view, that is the main goal here. So you could use it to detect malware or suspicious activity, such as spotting unknown processes connecting to external IPs, identify network hogs, find applications consuming bandwidth or keeping persistent connections, diagnose connectivity issues, such as seeing if a program is attempting to connect but failing or stuck in retry states. And you can actually see that with the colors, which we'll get to in a second here. Uh, monitor application behavior, track how software communicates with external servers or services. All right, so now let's hop on the computer here and check it out. All right, so we have it running on this Windows 11 computer here. And you can see if we scroll down here, we have a bunch of lines and they're constantly moving around, uh, kind of like you see with Task Manager. It can kind of make it hard to see what you're doing sometimes if it starts jumping around too long. And then you'll notice here at the bottom we have these time wait entries. So these are actually closed sessions, so it just kind of gives it a little bit of time before it completely closes them out to make sure some other uh, service is not going to be using that port or address. So these will go away eventually. All right, so you can see here we have Edge and Chrome open, and you can see we have entries for them. So even though we're not really doing anything, you're still going to see a lot of stuff going on here. So Chrome, I have a YouTube video going here. So if we scroll over a little bit here, so I'm kind of recording in a low resolution so everything doesn't fit that well. We have our sent packets, receive packets, sent bytes, and receive bytes. And you can see some of these, they're just the process is running, but they're not really sending or receiving anything. And you can see we have the local address of 0.0.0.0. .0 and this address here is the local address of the computer we're on. And here's the port it's using and the remote address. Sometimes you can right click on them, go to who is, and sometimes you'll get something, sometimes you won't, depending on what you're trying to do it on. And then other times you won't even have that option because there's not that type of connection. But you can see you could kill the process or go to the process properties. It just tells you the path to the executable that's running there. And if you click on explore, you could actually go right to that file. So this comes in handy for malware related items. So let's say you have something uh, sending out or receiving traffic on your computer and you want to go see what's doing it. You can go to the process and make sure it's not some executable that shouldn't even be running on your computer to begin with. All right, and you can see we have a bunch of entries for Edge as well. 
then you can see the colors changing from time to time here. So the green is when you have a new connection. You'll see the yellow when it's changing its state. And then you'll have red when the connection is closed. You can even see we have OneDrive going here. Even though it's not technically backing up anything, it's still running and still connected. And then we also have TeamViewer. So we're not actually using TeamViewer right now, but the service is actually running and listening. You can see the different connections here. Got the host name here, the local address here, local address here, host name, host name, and all these different ports. But it's not going out anywhere at the moment, as you can see, because we're not actually using it, but it is running. Then we also have this VNC server right here with an established connection to the VNC service right here. So if I go over to another computer and connect into this computer using VNC, let's see what happens. All right, so here's the computer that's running a TCP view, so we're going to connect to it remotely here. So now we're actually connected to that computer, and while we're here, we could look at it. Now you can see we have another instance of VNC server because we have this computer connected to it. Established connection here under the state. All right, so now I'm going to disconnect. Go back over to the main computer running TCP view. Now you can see we just have the one instance right here. All right, so let's go check out some of these options at the top here. So you could pause or resume, refresh, resolve addresses if possible. You can see it changes to Win 11 Home, which is the name of the computer when I click on that. But that's just a local address, so that's easy for it to do. It might not be able to do it for uh, certain remote addresses unless it's on your local area network. Process properties, so whatever you have selected, you can just click on it like we saw before. Same thing as when you right click on it. And if you don't want to see all of these, let's say you don't care about uh, UDP, you could just turn these off for TCP 4 and 6. Then you can see once you check them again, you get that green uh, connection being made again. And then up here, you have your filters. So if you want to uncheck any of these filters, which are all checked by default, you could do that as well. All right, then at the top here, you could save, which will save it as a CSV file if you need to send it to somebody to look at. Copy and search. You could pause from here, refresh from here, same as we have on the toolbar there. If you want to change the speed, you could do that. Change the protocols like you have up here. Then we have the connection states just like that. And then... The same thing when you right click, you check the properties or kill a process. So if something looks suspicious and you think it might be malware, uh, you could kill it from here too. And then maybe go investigate it after you kill it. Then we have the who is and the close. If you want to close a specific connection, let's say we don't want the VNC server, you could right click it from here too, close the connection. You can see it's turning red. But it's not guaranteed that it's going to close because we still have it running down here. So it's just reestablishing itself in this case. But uh, it's going to depend on what you're trying to close or whether it's going to stay closed or not. All right, then we have some options here to resolve the address if possible. Have it always be on top. Change the dark mode just like everything else. Change the fonts and reset. And then we have some help. All right, so as you can see, it's a pretty basic program. There's not a whole lot to it, but as you can see, it would definitely come in handy uh, for troubleshooting purposes, especially if you have something running on the computer uh, that's not supposed to be uh, doing so. And then one more example here. Let's go over to the right where we can see the packet sent and receive, and we're going to do this for Edge. So let's go down to Edge here. Go over to the right. So I'm going to start. A download here and then we'll see what happens with the uh, received packets and received bytes. Alright so we're downloading a huge file here so let's go back. And you can see here the received bytes is jumping up quite a bit here and same for packets. So now if we kill the download You can see it turned red because the connection stopped. 
and then the received bytes drop back down again. So that's one example of how you could use it to kind of find out what's going on with your computer. So if you need to track down the IP address or the port that's being used for that type of connection, uh, that's another way to do it. All right, so this is one of those tools, you know, that's just kind of interesting to play with, especially if you're on a work network that has multiple computers. If you want to see, you know, if it's going out to your file server or domain controller, you could kind of see the traffic in here and monitor it and just look for anything suspicious. So give it a shot and see how it works for you. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.